I don't know, I'm a little nervous for this one because it's my first time. Hey there, today I have a CGC unboxing video and in this video I'm going to open up a seven book comic book pre-screen that I submitted to CGC not too long ago. It was a pretty uh, reasonable turnaround. I wouldn't say it was uh, like ultra fast or super quick, but I, I would say a, a turnaround that is, is something that I would typically expect at this point in terms of where we are in the market and how CGC is currently operating. I took advantage of their new pre-screen policy. Uh, CGC used to require a minimum of 25 comic books for their pre-screen, and I think I ended up submitting this maybe twice. Uh, it was really expensive because you're sending uh, just a ton of books all at once, and uh, you get a lot of slabs back. It's a lot of inventory to deal with. And I really appreciate the fact that they've removed that minimum number of comic books to, to submit for the pre-screen. I personally find it easier to send books into CGC in smaller batches. When it comes to shipping, I'm a big believer in trying to unlock free shipping and consolidate a lot of these additional fees and, and, and things that often add up when you're dealing with a larger volume of books. But in this case, I don't necessarily mind if I'm creating a shipping label and I'm paying for insurance. The price break from sending seven comics into CGC versus 25, it's not that big of a deal if I were to send three or four different shipments of seven one at a time, if that makes sense. So I don't really mind it. I also found it easier meaning it was easier for me to find a smaller amount of books, like five to seven. I, I feel like I could locate that pretty quickly. And I was more motivated to send books off to CGC, so much so that I sent two submissions almost back to back, and then I have two more grading submissions ready to go. I, for me personally, I found the process of gathering 25 books rather daunting and also stacking 25 books in a shipment and putting cardboard and other things to secure it. With seven books, I can very easily add them using a Gemini mailer, which fits nicely into a USPS legal flat rate envelope. It's just easier for me to come across a smaller amount of books uh, that I feel would be worthy of a 9.8 pre-screen submission. Now, I've already seen the grades. I know that you know, it's a 9.8 pre-screen, so if it's a slab, it's a 9.8. Uh, I'll do my best to pretend to be surprised or shocked, uh, and there's really uh, something quite interesting in this submission that I hope you'll enjoy. So it's time to get the slabs out of the box. Okay, here we go. Uh, the first thing that I will say is uh, it was a perfect submission. Uh, there were no rejects. Um, I think I mentioned before that uh, I was more comfortable sending in uh, a smaller stack of books uh, for the pre-screen, and I sent two submissions back to back. This was actually the second submission. I'm pretty sure the first submission is taking longer because there might be at least one reject in there. This one is a perfect seven for seven, and these are all modern books, so I bet it's all playing into my theory that if you are gonna do the 9.8 pre-screen, I think you're better off with uh, submitting recently released uh, comics in for grading because I feel like the pre-screen process, I have no evidence of this, but I almost feel like it's different graders where if you send them an older book for a 9.8 pre-screen, I, I just don't, I think it's al almost automatically rejected. Like if there's any kind of flaw or defect where a lot of times these moderns will, I don't want to say slip through and it be incorrectly graded 9.8, but I, I just think that there's, there's just a different process. I think that um, if, if you send a lot of books that were released this year and then you throw in one book from like 1987, uh, typically that 1987 book just gets rejected. So again, uh, bear with me as I pretend to be surprised. I'll even cover some of the grades because I think that's super cool. Um, I don't have any post-it notes to put over the grade, but um, let's just finally look at the comics, shall we? All right. So the first book out of the box is the polarizing but cool Spider-Man number seven, 
This is the Humberto Ramos spoiler variant cover featuring Spider-Boy. This is the first appearance of Spider-Boy, uh, so it's his first cover as well. And this was something I recently picked up from Midtown Comics when they put the book uh, back up for sale at around 20 bucks. And uh, I grabbed four copies of this. And uh, Midtown is, uh, like I've said many times, when they're great, they're great. And when they're not, they're awful. Um, and a lot of it has to do with shipping. Uh, their shipping is horrendous. They, they pack books poorly. And it's just a huge risk that you take when you order from them. And I was able to get uh, an order sent to me that were, was not damaged in transit. And when that happens, and I'm like, okay, great, the books were not damaged. Brand new books uh, from Midtown are somewhere in the 9.4 to 9.8 range, but uh, I get a lot of 9.8 candidates from Midtown, so this was really great to see. So now, just like Dan Slott, I am all in on Spider-Boy, and I'm, I'm a huge investor in uh, Spider-Boy going forward, and uh, probably, without a doubt, will be at least as important as Miles Morales, if not more, I would say. And I'm not just saying that because now I have a 9.8 slab of his uh, first appearance. It's just one of those things that whether you believe in a character or a story or not, sometimes you just kind of have to ride the wave. And I thought if I'm just looking at the values anyway, a $20 investment to buy the book plus the cost for grading and the value of the slab, it just made kind of financial sense to go ahead and pick it up. So there it is, Spider-Man number seven from June 2023, the first appearance of Spider-Boy. And while we're at it, let's just go with a second copy. So nothing else really to uh, to see here or to say. Uh, I felt like out of the four copies that three out of the four were 9.8 candidates and I sent the strongest uh, two 9.8 candidates in this submission and hit on both of them. Okay, now just adding to my current obsession slash collection, which is World Tree. This is World Tree number one. This is the Zoo or Zoo, one in 50 retailer incentive. I also uh, picked this up from Midtown during one of their sales where the retailer incentives were steeply discounted, somewhere like 60 or 75% off. And I'd been after this book for a while, uh, the one in 50, and it was very common that there were so many World Tree number ones printed that the retailer incentives, uh, of course, the one in twenty, the one in ten, one in twenty-five, and the one in fifty, were quite common and easy to find. But for whatever reason, this was really easy to find, but expensive. Uh, it was still hovering somewhere between forty and sixty dollars, uh, and a lot of places had it, and they weren't willing to drop the price. And I waited for a sale, took a chance, and here we go. Uh, I have a nine point eight copy. Uh, featuring amazing art by Zoo or Zoo. So I'll have to add that to my wall of World Tree. Okay, now this one I was uh, really happy to get. Uh, this was uh, kind of a, a backup plan uh, where I had purchased this book through Art Germ Collectibles directly, and I purchased his signature series option where it was a 9.4 or above, and just like it sounds, you don't really know what grade you're going to get. It could have been a 9.4, it could have been a 9.6, it ended up being a 9.8. But what I had also done is I had picked up my own version of Sins of Sinister number one, the Art Germ 1 in 100 full art edition. And my plan all along was to have this in a 9.8 and then whatever grade the signature series uh, copy was going to come back in, then I would just live with it and ended up getting a 9.8 on both. Uh, just an Absolutely stunning cover by Art Germ, featuring the White Queen, Emma Frost, here on Sins of Sinister, number one, released in March of 2023. Another book that uh, I picked up from G-Mart uh, recently. Uh, G-Mart's always a place that I kind of forget about sometimes, but I've received a lot of quality books from them in high grade. Um, they do have back issues. I would not recommend uh, digging into their back issue content. There's no grades for their back issues. They're older back issues. But recently released books, I would say in the last five years, um, they've all come in uh, pretty minty and crispy. Uh, several 9.8s uh, out of G-Mart. 
um, and I can add this to the list. Uh, this is Hulk Annual, number one, and there was a little bit of heat that uh, this book received because of the first appearance, and it was, I think, talked about as a preview, and we weren't sure if the eldest actually appeared in this book first or if it was a preview. But the new Incredible Hulk series is one I intend to read. And when I heard about this character being kind of the main either villain or antagonist or just part of the storyline. But uh, I thought this cover was cool. It's done by one of the best, Gary Frank. And I just thought, why not go ahead and submit it? It was one of those where I was able to find it uh, for cover price, where it was more expensive in other places. Uh, G Mart just happened to list it for cover. And I picked it up, and as soon as I opened it and looked at it and graded it myself, I'm like, this thing's perfect. I'll go ahead and include this in a submission. And like I said, I think that brand new books uh, are a little bit easier for CGC to grade as part of the pre-screen process. So it was almost a guaranteed 9.8 as far as I was concerned. So happy to add this one. Uh, this is kind of an interesting thing, too, because I would say back in like 2021, uh, when CGC was really backed up, uh, books like this were interesting because uh, it, it would get some attention, folks would spec on it, and then you'd submit it to CGC and it would like sit with them for like nine months. And then by the time you got it back, like maybe the character had even passed on. Like it, it wasn't really all that interesting to the comic book collecting community. Uh, so it's possible that I would just hold on to this slab for six months more and then all of a sudden no one cares about the eldest. But uh, I love Gary Frank. I love the art on the cover here. And the Incredible Hulk story I've heard is really good. So a lot of things positively contributing to this book and why I sent it in. And sure enough, it got the 9.8. All right, I think it's time to finally unveil the thing that uh, I was mentioning before. That is, uh, it's a first time for me. I will say first that this book is not rare. So when you see it, hopefully you'll be surprised if you're, you're into CGC slab comics, uh, happily surprised. But it's not ultra rare in terms of the book itself and the census. So when I did take a peek at the grades and I saw this, uh, I got very, very excited but I will share the numbers with you as I show you the book um, so that you can kind of uh, maybe, well, I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to feel, but you kind of know what I'm getting at and let's get to it. Here it is, my very first 9.9, .9, and this is Something is Killing the Children number 30 from Boom Studios, released in March, 2023, and this is the Tula Lote foil edition, and I'm kind of moving it around a little bit uh, trying to get the light in it so you can kind of see the foil. The Lotte cover is stunning. And when I was trying to track this down, there is a one in a hundred. And then they uh, went ahead and just made a, it wasn't open order, but it was almost like an ex store exclusive kind of situation uh, where they took the same cover and it was a foil edition. And the foil edition was 20 bucks. And I thought, well, I love the cover. I'm a big fan of Lotte. I think that her art is getting better uh, as time goes on. I, I think she's just, she has a certain style that I'm really drawn to. And although I'm not, I'm not a huge collector of foil covers, I think they get scratched easily. And I'm, I was just floored that this got a 9.9. .9. And then when I went to the census and actually looked at it, there was roughly the same number of 9.9s as there were 9.8s, uh, maybe if just slightly fewer 9.9s. But, you know, typically you look at the census uh, for a book and you're like, uh, there's some hundreds or thousands of 9.8s and then there's like maybe one, two or three, just a small handful of 9.9s. Uh, so this was really more like a, like a three to two ratio almost of 9.8 to 9.9. .9. But nevertheless, this is really neat, really cool. My very first ever 9.9 .9 of one of my favorite, if not my favorite of all time independent series uh, with one of my uh, current favorite artists that I collect and look out for, for her artwork, uh, Tula Lote. So uh, great cover here. Absolutely love it. 9.9 .9 from CGC of this foil edition of Something is Killing the Children, number 30. Okay, and the last book, I won't go on and on about this one because uh, 
if you just heard me talking about the something is killing the children one in a hundred variant well here it is <laughs> this is uh, issue number 30 this is the one in a hundred uh, and hopefully you can tell the difference you can actually see this a lot better uh, when it's not foil which I love I, I love to display slabs on my walls uh, to appreciate the uh, collectability and the art and all of that and if you've got foils, sometimes they're hard to see. The light is glaring off of the foil, plus the, the slab's plastic, and there's a lot of reflection and glare going on. And I'd much rather have the, the regular version of this. And my goodness, I just... It's one of these situations where um, sometimes with comic art, or really any art, where it's kind of like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, sometimes I just see books and I'm like, like, that's it. That's the one. That's going to be an awesome cover. I don't care if other people like it. I like it. Uh, this was just amazing. Just gorgeous, gorgeous artwork by Lotte. And I ended up tracking this down off of eBay, which to me, it's... I have such a love-hate relationship with buying raw books off of eBay, but I studied the scan of this book, like, so intensely and it was certainly priced a little bit closer to ratio and uh, was trying to look for a deal at the same time, but I kept going back to this one listing and I was just going back and forth between the back of the book and the front and zooming in and just overly scrutinizing the cover. And I'm like, I've, I've got to take a chance on it. And I purchased this. And then right after I did, that's when I purchased the foil. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to try and hedge my bets a little bit here and try and figure out which one I like, which one I want to keep raw. And then when I got both in, I looked at both copies. I'm like, these both look gorgeous. They both look like 9.8 candidates. So I ended up sending both. I got uh, not just a 9.8 on the book. I got an elusive 9.9 .9 on one of these uh, books that I sent in. So I'm, I'm thrilled to finally have my first 9.9. .9. I'm also very, very happy that I got two separate 1 in 100 ratios in at a 9.8 hard to find those books not that they're rare but it's it's hard to find them where you're like that's the copy that's the condition and i have the budget to spend the money on that specific copy and not maybe something that has a blemish or a defect that somebody's trying to unload because while a one in a hundred is a, is a cool book to own if it's got some color breaking ticks and things like that on a brand new release, it just really, really diminishes the value fast. So it's a very tricky and risky investment, but I lucked out this time uh, going two for two with a couple of different one in a hundreds with cover art from two of the very best out there, Tula Lotte and Stanley Archer Lau. So I hope you enjoyed the results of this submission. I hope to be doing more of these where I have uh, different types of submissions. I have submissions out for pressers that once the work is done will get sent to CGC. So I'm doing that again. I'm doing pre-screens. And then I have books that really the grade doesn't matter too much. They're just worthy of getting slabbed. And I'm also sending those out to CGC as well. And have a couple of signature series submissions uh, that are prepped and ready to go too. So I am in full uh, submit to CGC mode. There's always something thrilling about getting your own books back where you feel like you've assessed them as best you could and used your own skill to determine the grade and it ends up working out. Uh, so this is a lot of fun. It's an expensive part of the hobby, but always nice when you can have a perfect 7 for 7 submission. Let me know what you think about these books by leaving a comment below. And if you like what I do here, please consider supporting me and my channel by clicking the join button under this video. Thanks for watching, happy collecting, and see you next time.